Nancy Jones, 42 million dead. Joseph Stalin, 20 or 30 million dead. The Nazi regime, every full pot, every authoritarian empire. And despite the fact that literally more than 200 million human beings have been murdered by their own government, not including war, you can pile on the war statistics on top of that, people still believe that government, the thing responsible for that, is what keeps us civilized. It's utterly insane, which is why they have to start teaching it to us when we're just barely old enough to understand the words. Because if you grew up in a free society and that guy showed up at your front door, everybody would not only recognize his, his suggestions as immoral and stupid, they would think he was insane. Wouldn't you think someone was insane if he was a normal person who showed up and said, I'm going to control you, I will decide what services you get, and I'm going to make you pay for them, and I'm going to hurt you if you don't go along with it. Like, okay, you're dangerous, and you're out of your mind. <laughs> Well, you have to choose between two of them. Now it's okay, because now it's democracy. And now it's great, and that's what we have to spread around the world. The idea that if me and Bubba show up at your front door and let you decide which one of us is going to violently dominate you, that means you're in charge. That's just as good as being free. And nobody in that context would fall for that. It's not the same as being free. That's choosing which robber is going to rob me. And yet, millions and millions and millions of people are genuinely, profoundly, emotionally attached to democracy because they think it equals freedom and civilization, and it's the exact opposite. <laughs> and again, the beauty of the situation, you know, the horror of the situation is the mass injustice that people not only go along with, but they vote for, thinking this is the system, this is what we need. Again, that guy at the front door who says, you won't possibly be able to live without my services. How many people really truly believe that human society cannot live without a ruling class, without government? It's a lot of people, which means they really believe that, like, we in this room could not possibly interact on a peaceful basis without that guy showing up who gets to threaten us all and steal our money. I don't see that guy here, and so far we seem to be getting along pretty well. But we're trained to imagine an exception. And that's why there's actually hope. Because in any other context, we all recognize the excuses for government as completely insane. We have to be trained when we're really young to see that in this case it's necessary. Because they have constitutions, and they have elections, they have these really big buildings, and they have lots of law books, and they sound so official, and you watch CNN, and they say big words, and they dress in suits, so it must be legitimate. It isn't just some loony at the front door saying you do what I say or hurt you. It looks so professional. <laughs> it looks like, you know, the inauguration. It looks like the crowning of a king. There's a reason for that. The divine right of kings was a little bit too stupid for people to fall for anymore. They changed it to divine right of politicians. Those people still fall for it. And if you do big rituals, it must be real, there must be something to this. They wouldn't do all this just based on made-up power, do they just claim to have? Well, yeah, they would, yeah, they did. And the only reason it works is because we fall for it. But again, the beauty is that people are naturally anarchists. And that doesn't mean they throw bombs through windows. It means they want voluntary interaction. They don't want the guy showing up and saying, I'm your natural, I'm going to boss you around. They want to be able to go to a supermarket and say, I, I want that and that, and I, I would have bought that, it's a little bit too expensive, so I'll just have these. And then you go to the counter and you do a voluntary transaction. You didn't have to buy anything, they didn't have to sell you anything. You did the deal, they get a little bit of money, you get some food or whatever you bought, you go away. Thank you. I'm going to break the death there. And guess what? There's a word for that. It's called anarchism. The more specific term for it is voluntarism. Um, and a lot of people say you should use voluntarism and not anarchism because that word is scary. And to a certain extent I agree, except usually if you start explaining voluntarism, someone will say, you mean like anarchism, no government? <laughs> so I'll just start with a term that freaks them out and then explain why it shouldn't freak you out to say that guy at your front door, it's not okay that he's doing it. And really, that is all the term means. When somebody says, I get to be your rightful lord and master for your own good, all anarchism means is, I don't believe you. 
I don't believe you want to violently dominate me for my own good. What kind of bogus claim is that? It's like a carjacker saying, this is for your own good. Can I have your car, please? Nobody would fall for that unless you do these big rituals and have massive propaganda from the time kids are nine little kids, pledge like allegiance to the flag, and to the republic, which is a ruling class, for which it stands, before they even know what the words are saying, what the words mean. And so, again, the reason that there is hope is this is not what people naturally choose. That's not the form of interaction they naturally choose. They choose voluntarism, which is I want to attack my neighbor. I don't want him to attack me. I want us to get along. I might not even like him. I might just kind of avoid him and he'll avoid me, and that's okay. We don't attack each other. We don't care. If we like each other, we'll deal with the people I like, and you can deal with the people he likes. Now, one... <laughs> One scenario that I've done a bunch of times when I do longer events, I don't have time to do the, the, the in-depth version now, is I will say, imagine that the people in this room, we were on a boat or a plane or whatever, crashed into a uh, deserted island, we're it. We're all the people in the world right now. There's no authority, there's no 911, there's no cops, there's no courts, there's no representatives to call. And I say, imagine this is the scenario, and most of us don't know the rest of us. And we don't know who we can trust, and there may be a couple of feds in here, and we nearly trust them. <laughs> and so I say, well, how, what would we do? Imagine that we're in. There is no, there is no cop-out available to say, well, we'll have authority handle it. Well, there isn't any. We're just sitting on an island. We're just people. What do we do? And I would go through, and, and these these events I, I did before, I would go through in detail the different scenarios. The first one is always, well, one guy says, well, I think we need leadership here. People say, okay, maybe. What do you mean? I mean, I'm in charge. I get to tell everybody what to do, and I get to hurt anybody who disobeys me. So I'll ask, who in this crowd would be for that? Nobody I have yet for anybody to say, I'm for that. That's government. So in that setting, nobody I've ever met at these events has been in favor of government. When I say, well, how about if somebody stands up and says, well, I have to teach a course on survival, and I know how to like, build huts that actually keep the rain out, I know how to start a fire without. And if, if people want to help out, like, I'll help you build your shelter if you help me build mine, and we can like, get a team together. Anybody want to voluntarily do that? I've never met anybody who objected to that. Now, some people might say, I can build my own hut. I mean, you guys go right ahead. I don't need to do that. I can build my own, but yeah, I'm sorry. Why on earth would I object to people getting along voluntarily doing that? Well, there's a term to that. It's called anarchism. Which means I do these events, everyone is against government, and everyone is in favor of anarchy. Anarchy, that scary word. In other words, voluntarism, getting along peacefully without a violent, dominating authority trying to forcibly run the show. So people are naturally what they need to be. And this is, this is why there's hope. Because we don't need people to learn some complicated solution. You know, it's so easy for people to look at politics and go, well, I voted for that guy, four years later I voted for that guy, and everything keeps getting worse. And these people say really big words, and they must know more than I do, and you know, uh, we can't possibly handle it. So it's got to be up to the political class. You know, they have all these rituals. They must know more than us. They must be more informed. We should just leave it up to them. And it always gets worse. But people fall for it because they think you have to be really, really smart to run things. That's one of my favorite terms is when people say, well, we need somebody to run things. Well, that's really darn vague. Do you need somebody to tell you how to grocery stuff, shop? Well, no, I can do that, okay? I don't get to go to the store. You know, what, is, what are the things that you need to be run? In what way do you need to be run by this guy who needs to run this? Well, it's not me, it's other people. Okay, well, every individual says it's not that, it's other people, which something doesn't add up with that, because it's no individual, it's always all the other people other than each individual, which doesn't make any sense. But people speak in these vague terms, like somebody has to be in charge, or somebody has to run things. And often people say, well, I know you're against government, but I think people need to be organized. And I say, okay, me too. And? And we need to cooperate. Yep. And? 
People have been trained not to recognize the one thing that makes government government, which is the right to violently rule. He can still cooperate, he can still organize. I'm not saying let every man for himself scatter. In fact, that's one of the things I, I ask when I do this, this scenario with the island. Who's, the first thing is, who wants one boss in charge who makes us do whatever he wants? Nobody likes that. Who wants every man to gather every man for himself? Nobody ever said yeah for that. <laughs> and yet people associate not having the master with every man for himself. And people will say, if you're against government, you just want everybody like living in a like a hermit in the woods. How do you get from I don't want someone violently dominating you to I want you living on your own out in the woods? The only reason they make that connection is because they have they've been trained to imagine connections that don't make any sense at all. And they speak in this vague terminology because they didn't, I say they, I did it for years and years and years, as he admit, it's just really embarrassing. But they talk about somebody being in charge. I mean, there, has, there have to be rules, that's one of my favorite ones. Well, what, they just, like, rules just appear somewhere? Or we need law? Well, what is law? But it's, it's the rules people have to live by. Well, like what? Like, don't attack each other. All right, I like that one. You just ruled out government. Uh, well, they get to attack. <laughs> and that's the funny thing is everybody knows the rules that matter. We don't have to teach any complicated philosophy. And that's why what I say is I don't actually teach a philosophy. What I try to do is take one lie in people's heads and get them to see that doesn't match who they are.